Welcome back. It is 743. The West Nile virus has been popping up all over the state. Luckily, no human cases have been detected thus far. So joining us this morning to talk about some of the signs to watch out for is Dr. Paul Skolnick. He is the chairman of the Department of Medicine at the Yukon Health Center. Good to see you, doctor. Thanks for coming on the program. My pleasure. So what are some of the um, things that we should be looking out for if maybe we have West Nile? Well, the first thing that's important to know is that most people who are infected don't even know it. They're asymptomatic, no symptoms at all. Uh -huh. That's about 75% of people. 25% of the time, you might have very mild symptoms, fever, not much else. What we worry about are those people who have the really serious disease, maybe one in 150 people. And then you have to look out for things like bad headache, muscle aches, the fever, of course, mm -hmm. and most dreaded of all, involvement of the brain or the nervous system where you would get confusion, decreased level of consciousness, inability to move your arms and legs. That's what we worry about. Why would one person, say, be asymptomatic, another person might just have a few minor symptoms and another person really be in bad shape? Does right. it have anything to do with the actual person themselves? It does. Yeah. You know, it's always an interaction between, in this case, the virus and the person's immune system. Um, and some people are just more able to control the infection. Very young people, infants and elderly, are more prone to get the severe disease and have problems. Is there like a severity with the virus? In other words, can a mosquito have a lot of West Nile and they really pump a lot into you versus maybe another mosquito where they just have a little bit? Or uh, is that, that kind of a strange question? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I, I don't know if we know the answer to that. Okay. I always think of it more as the body's ability to protect itself. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned mosquitoes are a very important part of this illness. They're the thing that actually transmit the disease. So first and foremost, we talk about prevention. How do you avoid getting infected at all? And that has a lot to do with the mosquito, control of the mosquito, and we have state departments, uh, sure. agencies that help us with that, but also individually. People should use insect repellent with DEET, up to 30% DEET. Right. They should cover their arms and legs and avoid dusk and, and dawn uh, if they can. And obviously you don't want the standing water out in the backyard. That's where the mosquitoes breed. Right. Yeah. Right. I know Rachel, for example, is pregnant, and you're not supposed to use DEET when you're pregnant. Mm. Is there another kind of ingredient you should look for in this repellent that works maybe just as well or that's close the classic to it. one that's the yeah. one that works best really when uh, a woman is pregnant she should avoid situations where there might be a bite right. and you know transmission is clearly very low so i don't think there's any need to be scared in okay. particular if you're pregnant Dr. Paul Skolnick, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks a lot. Interesting information. Appreciate that. Rachel, there she is. Yes, and I will tell you that, uh, unfortunately, I had to go to an outdoor wedding, uh, and I counted. I had 34 mosquito bites oh, on my legs. no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a couple weeks ago, so that's why I've been wearing pants for a while. <laughs> yeah, not fun at all. All right, let's show you what's going on outside right now, because this scene just cleared up. This was on